a beloved middle school female teacher, cherished by her students, was found dead in staff dormitory. Her body was wrapped in many layers of plastic sheet with plenty of activated carbon in between to absorb the odor of decay. The police issued a warrant, mobilizing a large number of police forces for the search. After a painstaking four-year investigation and chasing, the killer was finally captured and brought to justice. The case took place in a staff dormitory of a middle school in Fuzhou City, China. Fuzhou, a historic city on the southeast coast of China, which has a lot of ancient buildings from the Song, Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties. It is close to Taiwan across the sea, sharing profound historical, cultural, and social connections. Fuzhou also has many banyan trees. Some are more than a thousand years old. This is why people sometimes call it the Banyan City. In the summer, it is a landscape that people enjoy their life sitting in the shade of these trees. On February 6, 2016, the Chinese lunar calendar's 28th day of the 12th lunar month, just two days before Chinese New Year, a time of family reunion, Xie Tianxin's brother hadn't heard from her for half a year. Every time he called, it was her son, Wu Xieyu, who answered. On February 5th, he received a message from his nephew saying he would soon come back from Boston in USA and would arrive at Putian Railway Station in Fujian on February 6th. However, the family waited at the station all day and didn't see mother and son even by the last train. They tried calling and texting them, but got no reply. The family was worried and went to the police. At first, the police thought they might be hiding because they owed money, but the family said this wasn't true. They also found out from her colleagues that Wu Xie Yu had been seen at the dormitory in June 2015. The family asked the school to open the teacher's door, but they were told only the police could do that. On February 14th, a week after the teacher and her son had gone missing, the police decided to break the door of room 102 in building five of the staff dormitory. The room was dark because all the curtains were closed tight with black tape. The dust was everywhere. They entered the bedroom and found wrapped up thing that looks like a human on the bed. After trying hard to open it, it only turned out to be a mannequin. Without spending too much time, they found the real body under the bed. The body was well preserved, wrapped up in plastic film and activated carbon. It does take a while for them to open it. They found out the body actually was the teacher and she had been dead for months. The messages sent to Xie Tianqin's brother were obviously not from her, which made the police start to suspect her son, Wu Xie Yu. Wu Xie Yu, the only child in his family, was 21 years old. He grew up in a family which cares much about the education of their child. His mother was a school teacher, offering him a very good learning environment at a young age. He was highly intelligent, ambitious, and strategic, and his academic record was impressive due to his natural talents and his parents' diligent guidance. Wu Xie Yu didn't disappoint his parents and let their effort go to waste. His grades always ranked first, winning a lot of scholarships and reputations in his school. It seemed that study was quite easy for him. He completed his curriculum ahead of schedule, successfully admitted to a prominent local high school. Despite being the youngest student, everyone called him a prodigy for respect, but he was never proud because of this title. His introverted personality did not deter his popularity. He was the one who was always glad to give a hand to others, winning many high praises from teachers and classmates. In everyone's mind, he was meant to enter either Tsinghua or Peking University due to his excellence in study. As everyone had anticipated, at just 18 years of age, he was successfully accepted into the School of Economics at Peking University without sitting for the college entrance exam. His admission brought immense pride to his high school. Peking University and Tsinghua University are China's top two institutions, like Harvard or Stanford University in USA. They are both located in Beijing, which is China's capital city. Interestingly, the two universities are closely neighbored, only separated by a small road. Peking University, the only surviving achievement of the Hundred Days Reform in the late Qing Dynasty, holds an irrefutable historical and cultural status in China. It's like academic Jerusalem to all the Chinese students. 
Admission to Peking University isn't easy. Each year, among tens of millions of students nationwide, only about 3,000 are admitted. Wu Xieyu's success stemmed not only from his diligence, but also from his innate talents. A significant part of his talent can be attributed to his father, Wu Jijian. Born in 1967, Wu Jijian was the only son in an impoverished family with one boy and four girls. When he was eight, his father passed away due to liver cancer. At that time, his mother was pregnant with his youngest sister. After the baby was born, his mother chose to give away the newborn baby to another family because it's hard for her to raise one more child without help from her husband. Later, his mother remarried and gave birth to twin girls for his stepfather, one of whom died early, and the other had intellectual disabilities. Despite living in poor circumstances, Wu Jijian was a top student in his youth, having a very promising future. In 1986, he was admitted to Fuzhou University at a time when the university admission rate in China was extremely low. After graduating, Wu Jijian was assigned to a state-owned enterprise where he worked his way up to become a mid-level leader. Xie Tianqin's family situation was not much better either. She was also born in 1967 during China's 10-year Cultural Revolution, a political movement initiated by Chairman Mao Zedong. At that time, every Chinese citizen had a political identity such as peasants, workers, landlords, intellectuals, capitalists, and traders, which was inherited by their children. Among those identities, peasants and workers had the best political status, while others were not so fortunate. Many intellectuals were forced to parade through the streets, getting publicly criticized or to live in cowsheds. Some of them were even persecuted to death. The children were brainwashed by the political propaganda and slogans. They even reported their parents if they find their parents against the policy, leading to their execution. These ten years were one of the darkest times in China's history. It was unfortunate that Xia Tianqin's father was an intellectual at the time. Having been persecuted and treated badly, he blinded himself in frustration. Because of his intellectual status, he was often criticized, suffering from a life of extreme hardship. You may wonder why intellectual is discriminated against so hardly. It is all because Chairman Mao believed that China's intellectuals, who were often more aligned with Western-style liberal arts and sciences, were a source of capitalism and were a threat to the purity of the communist revolution. So he decided to eradicate these bourgeois influences by prosecuting the intellectuals. Si Tianqin grew up during the Cultural Revolution. Her family's special political status and her being the eldest of three siblings made her develop an upright, noble, sensitive, responsible, and principled personality at her early age. Her father gave great support to her education, often teaching her historical stories, which raised her enormous interest in history. She became the only university student in her family, entering Suzhou Railway Teachers College in 1986 to major in history. After graduation, she became a history teacher as she wished. Si Tianqin and Wu Jijian were introduced by an acquaintance. Both of them came from Fuzhou and had similar backgrounds. It didn't take long. They started to fall in love with each other and got married in 1992. Although both of them had pretty good jobs, they have to contribute part of their income to help their original families, so their life was not affluent. In 1994, they welcomed their son, Wu Xieyu. Xie Tianqin had a habit of keeping a diary, and on the day of Wu Xieyu's birth, she joyfully wrote, the baby has arrived. His cries announced the successful end of 10 months of pregnancy. The little baby is cute and healthy, and though he has just come into the world and it's impossible to tell who he looks like, unfortunately, his nose seems to be an exact copy of his mother's. The couple was very loving, you can tell that from their son's name, it includes both of their surnames, Wu and Xie, which is not very common in Chinese tradition. Wu Jijian was a very kind person and is always open to discussion. Everyone respects him greatly. His wife, Xie Tianqin, is a perfectionist who sets high standards for herself and is very dedicated to her responsibilities. She seldom bothers others. The couple get along well and have always respected each other, with no significant disputes. Xie Tianqin loved her son dearly, 
and has never physically or verbally disciplined him, which is quite uncommon in Asian families. She places great emphasis on her son's education. Under her guidance, Wu Xiaoyu always keeps himself clean and neat. He was also disciplined, polite, serious, and passionate, being a perfect role model in the eyes of his teachers and classmates. He had also conformed to his mother, trying hard to meet all her requirements. Although he wouldn't express his feelings in front of people, his friend said that in his blog wrote his love for his mom. In 2009, Wu Xiaoyu was admitted to a prominent high school in Fuzhou City, which is the best high school in the province. The whole family felt happy for him. However, a year later, his father was diagnosed with liver cancer, just like his grandfather. To avoid troubling Wu Xiaoyu's study, the couple did not tell him about the severity of the disease. At that time, the doctor proposed two treatment plans, surgical removal or interventional treatment. It is estimated that the tumor had not spread at that time, and there was still an opportunity for surgery. Surgical removal is the only chance of a complete cure for most patients. The couple chose interventional treatment finally. There are two types of interventional treatment for liver cancer. One is to infuse or embolize chemotherapy drugs into the hepatic artery to kill tumor cells. The other is to use a special ablation needle to pierce through the abdomen to the center of the tumor and kill the tumor by releasing high temperatures. Compared with surgery, interventional treatment has less trauma and risk, but a lower cure rate. After treatment, the cancer relapsed quickly. Then Wu Jijian returned to his hometown and accept herbal medicine for treatment. When Wu Jijian's classmates and friends learned about this, they collectively donated money to Xie Tianqin, wishing it could help them. But Xie Tianqin refused six times. She also didn't tell the school about Wu Jijian's condition and chose to continue working. In 2010, Wu Jijian eventually passed away under the wrong treatment method and Xie Tianqin felt very guilty about her husband's death. At the same time, the news of his father's death break Wu Xieyu down. With that being said, he did not choose to talk about his feelings with his mother and relatives, even though he couldn't accept the truth. It's a hard time for him, but it seems that he made it through. He didn't fall into depression and it didn't affect his studies. He was still that flawless, excellent boy in the eyes of his classmates. But according to one of his best friends, he once expressed suicidal thoughts to his friends. During high school, Wu Xie Yu had won many honors and was admitted to Peking University in advance in 2012. In the same year, Wu Xie Yu entered the School of Economics at Peking University and comforted his father's spirit with his achievements. In 2016, after the discovery of Xie Tian Qin's body, forensic experts performed an autopsy. The examination results showed that the body's head was smashed multiple times by a heavy object, which was the main cause of death. The murderer had attempted to dismember the body, possibly due to insufficient understanding of the body structure. They had failed to complete the dismemberment and instead used activated charcoal and plastic film to wrap it up, preventing it from being discovered due to the smell of decay. The estimated time of death was about six months ago, the investigator found out that Xie Tian Qin's social relationships were very simple. She had no bad habits, nor had any disputes with anyone. For the past six months, relatives had only learned about Xie Tian Qin's situation in contact with Wu Xie Yu, who was now nowhere to be found. Therefore, the police immediately identified the suspect as Wu Xie Yu and issued a Class A warrant for his arrest. At this point, it wasn't just the police who were concerned about Wu Xie Yu's whereabouts, but his relatives and friends who lent money to him. After July 2015, Wu Xie Yu borrowed a total of 1.44 million yuan from seven relatives and friends of his parents, 400,000 yuan of which was borrowed from his uncle. He claimed that he was going to study at MIT in the United States, and his mother would accompany him to Boston. He needed financial support to pay his tuition and living expenses. In everyone's eyes, he has always been an ambitious and promising good boy, a top student. Plus, Xie Tian Qin would never be the one who asked others for help, so no one ever doubted him. During the investigation, the police found out that before the discovery of his mother's body, based on his bank account transactions, 
they retrieved footage of him withdrawing money from an ATM from bank surveillance. Wu Xieyu did not cover his face and did not mind whether he would be captured by surveillance. There was few money left in the bank card, as it had all been withdrawn by him. On April 1, 2019, Wu Xie Yu was caught at the T2 terminal of Chongqing Zhangbei Airport. At that time, while Wu Xie Yu was entering the bomb-proof security inspection area at Gate 3, he was captured by surveillance equipment four times, identified as the criminal suspect Wu Xie Yu by artificial intelligence, and the airport police immediately approached him. They found more than 30 identity cards on him. Cameras in China are spread all over every corner of the city. You can find them at every important public place, such as intersections, stations, and airports. The recording will be streamed to the server that will analyze the personnel in real time, displaying the gender, age, and identity of the people who got captured. If one is matched in the criminal suspect database, the alarm rings and police will arrive. Therefore, the capture rate of criminals has been greatly improved. However, it's true that the Chinese people are monitored by the government. If the government wants to know where a person has gone and what they have done, it's super easy. No one could ensure their privacy in front of the camera. After being arrested, Wu Xie Yu confessed to the police about his crime. In early 2015, the idea of killing his mother emerged. By the end of June 2015, he had bought tools online, such as waterproof cloth, plastic cloth, isolation suits, etc. Judging from the items he purchased, he intended to dismember the body. On July 10th, during Xie Tianqin's summer vacation at home, when she returned home and was taking off her shoes, Wu Xie Yu walked behind her mother with a dumbbell bar and smashed her mother's head to death. Wu Xie Yu said that he chose July 10th intentionally because it has special meaning for him. His birthday was October 7th. The date he killed mother was reversed number of his birthday. After killing his mother, Wu Xie Yu prepared to dismember the body. It wasn't easy for him, since the victim was his own mother. He had overestimated himself and couldn't bring himself to do it. Over the following week, he checked into a hotel and returned home every day to clean the crime scene. He purchased a large amount of plastic film, activated carbon, and refrigerator deodorants, trying hard to wrap his mother's body up like a mummy in 77 layers. Afraid of seeing his mother's face while wrapping her up, he put a frying pan lid on his mother's face. When the wrapping is done, he placed the body under the bed. In order to deceive the police, a mannequin was bought and was handled in the same way, lying on the bed. After cleaning up the crime scene, Wu Xie Yu defrauded 1.44 million yuan from seven relatives and friends using the lies of studying abroad with his mother. To avoid any suspicion, he asked the lender to transfer the money to his mother's credit card. He also made a resignation letter using his mother's diary, sending it to the school where his mother worked. Therefore, no one would notice if his mother didn't show up at school. Moreover, he also invited his mother's colleagues to the dinner in his mother's name and held a retirement ceremony for her. Although Xie Tianqin did not attend, no one found anything suspicious under Wu Xie Yu's cover-up. He tried to withdraw the defrauded money from his mother's credit card. Although he didn't know the password before, he was certain that his mother used his birthday as the password. Sure enough, he successfully withdrew the money from the ATM. After getting the money, Wu Xie Yu began to let loose and lived a lavish life. In August, he spent more than 500,000 yuan on lottery tickets, which obviously turned out to be a huge loss. At the same time, he had sex with many prostitutes, paying between 4,000 and 16,000 yuan each time. His sexual appetite was quite strong. There was a time when he hired two prostitutes to serve him. Later, he fell in love with a prostitute from Henan province, spending over 200,000 yuan on her. It seemed pretty crazy about this relationship. They made a lot of sex tapes together and traveled to Hong Kong for shopping. Without telling her his authentic name, he brought up a proposal of marriage to her. His prostitute girlfriend refused him without any hesitation, and they had several arguments about the marriage. On the night they broke up, Wu Xie Yu drugged his girlfriend, making her fall into a coma and burned his own laptop, which contained a large number of adult movies. 
He alleged later that it was because he did not want others to know about his filthy side of him. According to his girlfriend, Wu Xie Yu is a man who does not care about societal moral values. He sees himself as a man's man, willing to disregard everything for a woman. He wants to find a woman with femininity to be his lifelong companion. According to Wu Xie Yu's confession, he used the purchased forged ID to travel through multiple cities during his escape, having to work for a living, and finally settled in Chongqing City. He worked as an English teacher at an educational institution during the day, but when it was night, he frequented several nightclubs working as a man model. These two jobs did not strictly verify personal identity information, and it was difficult to distinguish the authenticity of the ID without careful inspection. He once used the fake name Zhang Weijin in the nightclub, and later changed it to Zhou Long. His ID information said that he was from Hunan province, but his accent didn't quite match. Wu Xie Yu, who spoke fluent English, was popular among his customers for his fit body, and he can also hold his liquor very well. He hid his identity as a Peking University student and claimed to have graduated from Tsinghua University. He was paid 500 yuan each time he served at the club. Despite having a decent income, he stopped his previous extravagant lifestyle and begun to be more cautious. The residential complex he rented was located in Zhangbei district of Chongqing City with a monthly rent about 3,000 yuan. Even during this period, he often went out to visit prostitutes. Unlike his colleagues, he stayed in Chongqing for work during the spring festival. The colleagues simply thought that he just wanted to earn double wages. Wu Xie Yu was very vigilant while working at the bar, never getting into any conflicts. Even if someone yelled at him, he would not fight back. He rarely talked too much with his colleagues. His caution made it difficult for the police to trace him until he appeared at Chongqing Zhangbei Airport in 2019. Although Wu Xie Yu gave a very detailed confession, he did not directly answer the key question of why he murdered his mother. Why would such an elite student with outstanding performance choose to murder his mother and walk down a path of no return? During his university, Wu Xie Yu continued his perfect performance. In his first year, he won the triple good student title at Peking University. And in his second year, he received the Liao Kaiwan Scholarship at Peking University, amounting to over 10,000 yuan. He studied the GRE at an English institution out of school, and his grades ranked in the top 5% globally, winning a scholarship of 6,000 yuan from the that institution. He also summarized his GRE learning experience and published it online, helping many students who were planning to study abroad. Wu Xie Yu maintained his consistent academic excellence. He originally planned to study abroad, which was why he took the GRE, but for some reason he finally chose to give up. On December 24, 2020, the Fuzhou Intermediate People's Court held a first-instance trial of the case. The prosecution argued that Wu Xie Yu was guilty of intentional murder, fraud, and forging identity documents, which should be punished seriously according to law. Wu Xie Yu made his final statement, speaking for nearly 20 minutes without pause and demonstrating very clear logic. He described his complex psychological changes in court, attributing his transformation to the death of his father. He said, Without my father, this is no longer a complete family. After he passed away, my reticent mother silently take on a lot, not telling me what was happening and not wanting me to worry. This atmosphere cast a long shadow over me and made my inner world very lonely. During my studies in Beijing, my mental condition underwent even greater changes, starting to become pessimistic about the world. After several unsuccessful suicide attempts, I decided to kill my mother to relieve her and then commit suicide so that we could join my father. After having this idea during the Spring Festival of 2015, Wu Xie Yu began planning in April and eventually chose to kill his mother with a dumbbell rod on July 10th. As for sentencing, he wished the court to give him a chance to live. He still had the ability to work and could do something for society. He also said that he is writing and hopes to use his work to alert the world. On the morning of August 26, 2021, the court publicly sentenced Wu Xie Yu in the first instance. Because he had thorough premeditation and planning for a long time, 
His subjective malice was extremely severe, and the crime he committed was brutal. His act of matricide seriously violated family ethics and trampled on normal human emotions. His crimes had an extremely adverse social impact. Although he truthfully confessed the facts of the crime, this was not enough for lenient punishment. The court decided to sentence him to death. He did not appeal in court. After the first instance trial, the defendant had 10 days to appeal. Wu Xie Yu's case has ignited intense discussions online. Many people attribute the matricide to Xie Tianqin's education, describing Xie Tianqin as a person with strong control and obsessive compulsive disorder, treating her son too strictly, imposing her own pursuit of perfection on Wu Xie Yu, and not giving Wu Xie Yu a happy childhood. She forcefully intervened in her son's life, warning Wu Xie Yu not to fall in love with any girls. There were also rumors that Xie Tianqin and her husband had a bad relationship. She discovered her husband had an affair, and that the marital discord of parents led Wu Xie Yu to become disappointed with the family and become extreme in character. However, in court, he never spoke ill of his mother. It seems that his mother's strict teachings did not affect their relationship, and the story of Wu Xie Yu's father's infidelity is completely unfounded. According to the neighbors' descriptions, the couple's relationship were very well. There were no conflicts and quarrels. Wu Xie Yu also said in court that his parents was like Romeo and Juliet. In court, he confessed that his motive for killing his mother was becoming pessimistic and disillusioned due to his father's death. He believed his mother was the same, so he decided to end his mother's life, then to end his own life, making the family reunion in another world. So why did Wu Xie Yu lead a lavish life after killing his mother? After the first trial, Wu Xie Yu decided to appeal and wrote a 50,000-word confession letter to his aunt and uncle, asking for their forgiveness. The relatives also issued a letter of forgiveness, hoping the court would impose a lighter punishment, because after all, he is Xie Tianqin's only blood, even though he committed such a heinous crime. On May 19, 2023, the second trial was tried in the Fujian Provincial Intermediate People's Court. The defense focused on Wu Xie Yu's motive for the crime and whether he suffered from a mental illness. He argued that Wu Xie Yu was dominated by symptoms of mental illness at the time of the crime and could not correctly identify the legal significance and consequences of his actions. In this regard, the Fujian High Court believes that, upon a comprehensive review of all evidence, Wu Xie Yu was fully capable of discerning and controlling his actions at the time of the crime. The facts established in the first instance judgment are clear. The evidence is accurate and sufficient, the conviction is correct, and the sentencing is appropriate. The trial procedure is lawful. The appeal was rejected and the original judgment was upheld. Wu Xie Yu's death sentence was legally submitted to the Supreme People's Court for approval. This implies that he will be executed this year. The case, from the arrest of the suspect to the end of the trial, took more than four years in total. The case itself is relatively simple and does not involve other cases. Usually, the process could be completed within two years. However, this case is exceptional for three reasons. Firstly, the act of matricide goes against moral norms. Secondly, Wu Xieyu was a top student at Peking University. Lastly, the case caused a huge divergence in public opinion. These factors forced the judge to be extremely cautious when sentencing. Wu Xie Yu's case indeed won the sympathy of many young people. Some inaccurate reports on the internet misled many people into believing that Wu was driven to kill his mother by the immense pressure due to her strictness and his father's death. However, it cannot be denied that Wu had long been addicted to sex using his limited living expenses and scholarships to pay prostitutes during his school years for pleasure. Maybe the reason that he killed her mother is not just like what said the pessimism, but for the sex satisfaction that money buys. She was the only person standing in his way, so he cruelly killed his mother in order to satisfy his desires by obtaining her money. But one thing is certain. Chinese families and schools often intentionally avoid sex education ignoring the sexual needs of teenagers or college students. When they graduate from college, they are pushed into society and urged to get married by their parents. 
This leads to a significant mismatch in their psychological development. Even after reaching adulthood and attending college, students are still arranged in dormitories with many roommates, usually six to eight people in one room. Schools refuse to treat them like adults. In fact, everyone has a right to have their own privacy and space, which is a basic need for any adult. Such a living environment is harmful to mental growth. Therefore, in addition to meeting children's material needs, Chinese society and families should also pay much attention to their psychological needs and guidance, acknowledging the sexual needs of young adults. What's heartbreaking about this case is, Wu Xie Yu did not know his mother's credit card password, but he was certain that the password was his own birthday. He was his mother's entire world. Instead, his mother was merely a tool to satisfy his desires. The detail is truly difficult to put into words.